We will now finish our discussion of grid connected PV systems with batteries by looking at AC coupled systems. In this recording, we will discuss some of the reasons for an increasing interest in AC coupled systems. The question we want to address now is why do people want to install AC coupled grid connected PV systems with batteries? As part of this question, we need to ask, why not? In other words, why have many people preferred DC systems? And then, what is changing that is leading to more interest in AC coupled systems? Here's our basic DC coupled system. We have a PV array and a charge controller, batteries and a combined charger and inverter, all connected to each other through a DC bus. In better systems, we have a charge controller with a built-in maximum power point tracker. What are the advantages of this design? First, the components are available. The charge controller can be the same charge controller that is used in off-grid systems. This is a well-established product. The grid-connected inverter charger can be the same product that is used in backup power systems without PV. This is also readily available. It may have an input for a generator or a windmill, or maybe not. The charge controller and the inverter charger may or may not be made by the same manufacturer. Many systems like this have been pieced together by installers. Second, it seems logical to connect a system like this. After all, the PV array produces DC electric power, and the batteries are DC components. It makes sense for the connection between them to be DC also, or so it seems. Lastly, both of these components know to stop charging the batteries if they are fully charged, as indicated by the battery voltage. It's nice if the components can communicate digitally to coordinate their activities, but it is not essential. So, let's explore these advantages. First of all, availability of components. The inverters for grid-connected PV systems without batteries, which you would use in an AC-coupled system, are now much more common. There are several manufacturers and competition has led to improved efficiencies and good prices. This is less true for the equipment used in DC coupled systems. Also, inverters for grid connected PV systems without batteries are available in a very wide variety of sizes. So, this may not be that much of an advantage. Second, compatibility. It used to be that inverters for grid-connected PV systems without batteries would not work with the other equipment you needed to use in a system with batteries. In particular, the PV inverters need a very stable AC frequency, which battery-based equipment could not provide. But battery equipment with the stable enough output frequency is now available. Third, both PV arrays and batteries are DC, so why not connect them this way? Well. One problem is that the maximum power voltage of a PV array keeps changing. That's why we need to keep tracking it with the maximum power point tracker. Another problem is that battery systems of the size we are talking about are generally 12 volts or 24 volts, and sometimes 48 volts. For a given power, running the array at these voltages would require more current, and hence more copper wire, than at higher voltages. So we usually operate our array at a higher voltage and then convert the power to a lower DC voltage for the batteries. It may be more efficient in principle to convert one DC voltage directly to another without going through AC in between, but with modern electronics there may not be much difference. So the advantage of keeping the power DC when going between the PV array and the batteries is also questionable. That brings us to stopping the charge when the batteries are full. This can be a problem. Here's an AC coupled system. The PV array inverter is a typical one for a grid connected system without batteries. It tries to optimize the output power of the array and put it out as AC power as efficiently as possible. Some of this power will go to the loads. Also, the inverter is designed with the assumption that any power that does not go to the loads will go to the grid. Under normal conditions, only a small amount of power will go to the battery charger to replace the energy lost to internal discharging. But now, suppose that power from the grid is lost. 
Power from the PV array can go to the loads, and power that the loads do not need can go to charge the batteries. But suppose the batteries are full, so they can't take any more charge. Inverters for PV systems, at least of the size we are talking about, have not traditionally been designed to reduce their output below what the PV array can produce. But output power from the PV inverter has to go somewhere. This leaves three choices. One, we can disconnect the inverter and simply let the AC loads run on battery power for a while. When the batteries are no longer full, the PV inverter can be reconnected. A second choice is to add a feature to the inverter so that the charger can tell it to reduce its output power. In this case, the inverter reduces the power it draws from the PV array to the amount that the loads need by keeping the array at a voltage which is not its maximum power point voltage. A third choice is to switch in some extra load to take up the extra power from the inverter. This load is called a diversion load. When the diversion load is connected in, the extra power can flow to it when the batteries are full. Different manufacturers have been pursuing these different alternatives. Which one is best is not clear at this time, and it may depend on the specifics of the systems. On our list of advantages of DC coupling over AC coupling, we see that there are several possible ways around the third supposed advantage. Now let's discuss the reasons for using AC coupling. First, we can use the same inverters that we use for systems without batteries. There are many manufacturers, models, and sizes to choose from, ranging from 700 watts to 1.5 megawatts. We can even use microinverters and AC modules in an AC coupled system with the performance and safety advantages that they have. We can also use other AC equipment in place of some DC equipment in a DC coupled system. AC switches are smaller and less expensive than DC switches for the same voltage and current. Other AC equipment is more common than equivalent DC equipment. Another reason for AC coupled systems is that there is much more separation between the PV and battery parts of the system. Each one is separated by a DC to AC conversion from the AC bus where they are connected. This is valuable if you want to do experiments independently on each part of the system. But probably the most important reason that AC coupled systems are getting a lot of attention right now is because of easier retrofits. Some people who already have grid connected PV systems without batteries are deciding that they want to have backup power that can draw power from their PV array. This is occurring in New Jersey and elsewhere in the northeastern United States, where recent storms have caused extended losses of grid power. It is easier and less expensive to convert an existing grid connected PV system without batteries to an AC coupled PV system with batteries than to a DC coupled system. A major reason for why it is easier is that the system can continue to use that inverter that is already there. Switching to a DC coupled system requires a different inverter, which often requires a different array voltage. A different array voltage would require rewiring the array, but this is not necessary when switching to an AC coupled system. Microinverters and AC modules are becoming increasingly popular, especially for residential scale systems. Using these products in a system with batteries requires an AC coupled system. Let's compare how we would integrate a DC coupled system and an AC coupled system into a building. This is the schematic diagram we saw previously for a building with an emergency power system that includes a DC coupled PV array. The PV charge controller and the charger inverter are inside the block labeled emergency power system. If grid power is lost, the emergency power system needs to be disconnected from the main electrical panel. The disconnection may be manual or the switch may be controlled by a sensor in the emergency power system that can sense when grid power is lost. Once the switch is opened, the batteries and the PV array will then be able to provide power through the emergency power system to the emergency electrical panel and through it to the critical loads. In this diagram, the DC bus is inside the emergency power system. We should note also what happens when the grid is connected. If the batteries are full, we would like the PV array to supply power to the building in parallel with the grid and even sell power back to the grid if the array is generating enough of it. 
Therefore, the emergency power system needs to be grid interactive, meaning it can synchronize to the grid's waveform and it meets the waveform requirements of the grid. Now, let's look at what is different in the AC coupled system. First, we add a PV inverter, and we connect the PV inverter to the emergency electrical panel. The PV inverter needs to be grid interactive. When the grid is connected, the power flows from the PV inverter into the emergency electrical panel. Some or all of it will go from there to the critical loads. If there is more than enough for the electrical loads, the power can flow back to the main electrical panel and from there to the non-critical loads. If there is more than enough for the non-critical loads also, the additional power can flow back to the grid. The block labeled Emergency Power System contains the battery's inverter charger. This could be a grid interactive inverter charger so that it could put out power from the battery in parallel with the grid. One might do this if there is a power shortage on the grid or if the grid operators are paying a high price. However, in practice, all battery inverter chargers sold for use in AC coupled PV systems are not grid interactive. When they are connected to the grid, they are built to work only as chargers. They only work as inverters when they are disconnected from the grid. In the next video, we will discuss some of the equipment that has been developed or modified for AC coupled grid connected PV systems with batteries. We will see companies that make battery inverter chargers that can be used with other companies grid connected inverters and companies that make both PV inverters and battery inverter chargers that can be integrated.